What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Don't mind the rust on the welding table. It's been humid as hell, and I haven't cleaned it off, but that's not going to matter for our video today. Today, we're going to be dealing with a topic you probably didn't know anything about, didn't think of, and didn't realize can really uh, bust you in the shorts, per se, and that is welding around bearings. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get into it. So the experienced among you, I already know that you know exactly where this video is heading. But a lot of you out there would have never put a second thought to this. And that's why I'm covering this and giving an actual example so we can all learn from it. Because I don't know that anyone has given an example of this on the internet. But I haven't seen one ever. And I thought it would be a fun little quick experiment video where we can all learn something. And what I'm talking about is welding on a bearing or per se welding around bearings. Now, obviously you guys are smart enough to know, hey, you don't put a ground clamp on this bearing and start welding on it and think you're gonna have a positive outcome, right? I know you guys get that, but what would happen if you were to weld on something where your ground was say on this table, this bearing is resting on it and something you're welding over here happens to be interconnected to the inner race where the electrical flow has to use the roller bearings in here as a ground path. And there's an old saying that you always want to be grounded on the side you're welding for a bearing and that holds true. And this video I think will prove it. Now, I know realistically, most of you would probably realize that, hey, if there's a bearing, you should probably move your ground clamp, but I'm going to freely and openly admit, I've been enough of an idiot to where I'd be welding 15, 16 different things and just simply forget to move the ground clamp to the other side of the bearing, strike an arc and realize what I just did, and I know trouble's brewing, okay? <laughs> it happens. That's why any time that you do weld around bearings or you know that there's a bearing in a potential path of the ground, be smart about it. Set yourself up to where you can't make a stupid decision and accidentally weld on the other side of it. And that goes for arc strikes too. I have a feeling it won't take that much current or time for it to cause a short inside of here, heat up the roller and destroy part of the race or at least enough of it to where the bearing will fail. And that's what you guys got to remember is even a little small indent on here where it arced internally is enough to cause bearing failure over a fairly short amount of time. Like this race needs to be heavily polished, very clean and not have ridges in it and arc marks internally are not what you want in here. So let's take a close-up look at this to verify how clean this bearing is, and then we're going to go and test. Hopefully this is in focus here. It's pretty difficult to get a high-resolution photo and video of this bearing race because of how polished it is. But I'm going to spin it, and I want you to look at how clean that surface is. There's no arc marks. There's no damage to it. Seems to be perfectly fine as it should be for a brand new bearing. Now let's look at the rollers. Here you can see the rollers are all perfectly fine. No damage. Again, brand new bearing. I wiped the little bit of oil that was on this off just so we don't get, well, excessive smoke. But we can readily determine where something arced internally. But pretty much brand new bearing. Let me put this race on here and spin it a little bit. You can hear pretty quiet even though it's weeble wobbling. No issues with the bearing whatsoever. Sounds 100% good. So let's set this up and weld on where the current will pass through this. So here's the janky borderline dangerous setup that we got here. All I'm doing is the output shaft per se that's on this bearing is clamped to the ground. I have weight on it to put enough downward force to where the bearing has some sort of preload on it so that there isn't a gap in there because that would definitely cause arcing when you have an air gap or something. So got a little bit of downforce. All of this BS is isolated from the table via wood. Wood doesn't conduct electricity if you were unaware. Well, not well anyways. <laughs> 
So if for all effective purposes, the inner race that the rollers run on is isolated from everything else, as well as from the outer race. And the outer race is touching this plate. And on this plate, I'm going to run a couple passes of 7018. Uh, we'll start with one and then we'll inspect the bearing to see if any damage was done to it. Now, a couple things regarding this. Depending on how the load is on the bearing, if multiple rollers happen to be in a path of least resistance per se for the electricity, it may not actually cause damage to the race or the rollers. But what you got to remember is bearings don't have very much friction because there's such a small contact patch between the roller and the race that effectively there's almost no friction especially with a lightweight oil. That small contact patch is the equivalent to trying to weld through a super small like 24 gauge wire with a whole bunch of amperage. Therefore, you can see where that would be a problem. And now the old saying electricity follows a path of least resistance, it actually follows multiple paths. It's not just a single path, especially on something like say this table or all of those rollers in there that provide contact from the outer race to the inner race. So long story short, in theory, I think we might see multiple rollers get smoked in this. I'm not sure, but for sure, we're going to pass electricity through something that can't handle it and the resistance will go up. Therefore, it will produce heat and the heat will start, I don't think, melting anything, but we're definitely going to have discoloration, I would say. So we'll start out, I'll run a single pass, 120 amps with the eighth inch 7018. All right, put this hat on there just to protect it from sparks so that we could definitely make a determination as to what happened. Now, by the way, this plate is pretty hot. I ended up uh, touching this earlier. I was running some practice beads, burned my finger. Yeah, so hot metal that's welded is hot. Imagine that. I'm gonna give this a minute to cool down the race seems to actually be hotter than I would have thought for running a single pass, but we'll do an inspection once the sucker cools down. So let's take a look and see if we have any damage. I don't see any marks on the race, surprisingly enough. I don't see any hot spots. It's still kind of warm though, so a lot of current was definitely passing through that. The bearing itself, I also don't see any arc marks, surprisingly enough. And I think the reason behind that is I had a good enough contact and everything was, oh, wait a minute. We do have an arc mark here. Yeah, that wasn't there earlier. So I see an arc mark on the outside of the bearing race right here. So it definitely arced to that on the initial, but the path to ground through the bearing must have been decent enough to where the heat was spread out over a bunch of rollers. Therefore, it was able to handle it. Now, had I had grease or something in here, that likely would have made it worse. So... By the look of it, at least this, I don't see any hugely detrimental spots or anything. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna clamp everything up again, set it on there. We're gonna run uh, another single pass and I'm gonna kinda leave this not touching perfectly. So a little bit less preload and we're gonna see what happens then. So all I did now is I rolled it to where the race is touching the top of one bead rather than two beads. So it has more or less one path directly into the race for a ground. That may affect the outcome as well. I took away the preload. There's still weight on it to where it's not really gonna move, but let's run another pass and see what happens. So I have the bearing here and I knew right away that something was wrong. When I spun this, I mean, it's not too bad, but it feels a little bit notchy. You can hear it. And maybe that's just because there's no preload on it. 
but take a look at this. So I pulled the race off and looked at it, and I see a little black spot that's clearly where it arced through this, which the funny thing is, so it arced through this edge here, but the internal arc is halfway on the race, so electricity flowed through an angle on this. That appears to be the only point, so right there. And then I got to looking at the bearing, I'm like, okay, everything's good, I don't see anything, and then I see this guy right here, and let me zoom in on that for you. Hopefully you can see it, but one of these rollers isn't like the other, and it's this guy. It's like a golden color, a little bit of purple. It appears to have a slight arc mark on it. The rest of them appear to be fine. So clearly the electricity decided to take the path through the race right at this point, right here. That little dot and then smoke this. Now I'm going to cut this apart and we're going to look at the internals to see if it also screwed that up as well. But just a little bit less of a contact or a different way that the electricity decided to flow through it and we smoked this. And this was at 120 amps. If you were running even more amperage, the result would have been probably worse and in far less amount of time. So here's the roller right here. The arc mark on it is right here on the end and it has 180 degrees on the backside, the same mark. So the current passed through this end, heated it up, and then thus it's discolored. The race itself, this little mark right by the rod tip is where it's shorted into this race. And again, it goes back to that small contact patch between the roller and the races. Essentially 120 amps, at least temporarily, went through that spot which clearly couldn't handle it and thus it caused it to start to melt and heated this roller way up. So that is why you want to be extremely careful when you're welding around bearings and stuff and not mistakenly weld through one via the ground path. Alright, let's go talk about a story. So story time for you guys, and this is directly related to what we saw today. Uh, old neighbor of mine, which by the way, I got to get him on video. He's quite a hoot. Uh, old Vietnam vet, also a welder. Great guy named Bob. Anyways, Bob was telling me a story one night when he was half in the bag about how he worked at P&H Industrial Cranes. So him and his coworkers used to make cranes for P&H which was a company that still is in Milwaukee. It's now Joy Global slash some, I don't know, something else. Kumatsu, who cares? So he and a group of guys were manufacturing a crane, overhead crane, gantry crane of some kind, I guess. And they built the whole thing, shipped it overseas to say Germany or wherever. Now, mind you, this is 20 years ago. It got there, they assembled it, and nothing moved. So like everything that needed to move, the wheels, all this stuff, they couldn't get it to work and they did a huge investigation to find out what happened. They had suspected that it rusted in transport. Come to find out, one of the welders who, at least Bob didn't tell me it was him, he claimed it was somebody else, so we'll give Bob credit that it wasn't him. But someone had welded through almost all the bearings. So they had their ground clamp on the wrong side, and back then they were stick welding a lot of it with big rods running, you know, 200, 250, 300 amps through the bearing. And yeah, it was a big bearing, but the contact patch is still so small that they smoked all the bearings and they literally welded them together, which at that time, I think he said it was a multi-million dollar failure. So pretty crazy. So this is real life, you know, you can wreck stuff if you do this. So I thought I would share that pretty, pretty funny story. Anyways, so in conclusion, what did we learn today? Well, I learned that it's very important to know where your ground cable is. And anytime you're working on heavy equipment or anything you suspect of having a bearing, set yourself up to where you can't even arc strike on the opposite side of that bearing. So be smart about it. If you do arc strike through a bearing somehow or weld through a bearing and you realize that, honestly, buddy, you better pull that out and replace the bearing. I hate to tell you, I know it sucks. I know you don't want to hear it, but 
even though the first try that I did, we didn't see any deterioration of the bearing. That doesn't mean it didn't have hard spots due to the heat input in it and where it would wear out anyways. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that if you arc struck through a bearing, expect a failure, if not immediately, but very soon after. So, and the point is to, now that you know this, that hopefully you can avoid, un, you know, an avoidable failure in the future. So be smart about bearings and treat them like your friends. Don't burn them. With that said, if you got a story dealing with welding through bearings and smoking equipment, feel free to leave it in the comments because I enjoy reading that because we can all learn about it. Because this is, uh, well, I mean, it is funny, but not when it happens to you and not when the boss is screaming and hollering over the stupidity. But hey, it's all stories you can share with people, right? With that said, thanks for sticking around. Until next time.